Here we have true facts about zooplankton. Is it zooplankton? Is it zooplankton? Zooplankton are tiny animals found in most pods, lakes, and oceans, and are mostly microscopic. They make up a key part of the food chain, and are often primary consumers or secondary consumers, which means they eat plants or smaller organisms, but are the basis for what everything else eats, which, if you ask me, kinda sucks. Zooplankton are comprised of four main groups, ostracods, clodocerans, copepods, and rotifers. However, you may only think that there are three groups, because some groups are little <laughs> and don't like to be found. Like other animals, zooplankton have to eat too, which is actually kind of surprising given that everything eats them. Some zooplankton, such as rotifers, are filter feeders and essentially are floating stomachs filtering food to their mouths using cilia. To visualize this, picture the average American on Thanksgiving dinner, minus the floating part. Other zooplankton, like cladosterans, are predators and are even quite fast, making filming them difficult. If only the camera workers knew how easy it is to film zooplankton and ethanol, but some people just aren't with the program. Even still, zooplankton such as cladosterans are herbivores and are effective at controlling algae. In lakes and ponds with algae blooms, they can control eutrophication, helping to maintain the health of the body of water. Quite the superpower, huh? And it's better than ostracods, as most of them eat algae and detritus, which is just decaying organic material. Essentially, they're the hipster vegans of the zooplankton world. A zooplankton called Daphnia? No, not her. Are constantly studied in science and are model organisms for studying evolution in freshwater biology. Thus, they are very useful in this sense, and many scientists will focus their studies on them. Essentially, they are the all-stars of the minor leagues in the animal kingdom, but hey, it's more than a participation trophy. To avoid predation, zooplankton will do something called diel vertical migration. This is when they go lower in the water column where it is darker during the day, and rise to the surface at night. They avoid predation from vision-based predators because they are always in the dark. Which kinda sucks, but hey, it's better than being eaten. Basically, they- <laughs> Seems a little weak if you ask me, and if they're in the dark, why do they even look like they have eyes? Seems like a waste, but who am I to judge? While zooplankton migration might protect them from some predation, it may not be enough to protect them from all predation. Further help comes from phenotypic plasticity, where the zooplankton can physically change to help prevent being eaten. Basically, they morph their carapace in times of stress to grow spikes on their heads and tails. It would be like if we grew swords on our hands or something to fend off lions, and people make fun of Edward Scissorhands for some reason. However, this does come at a cost to zooplankton as they have to put in extra energy to make these defenses and cannot be completely focused on reproduction. Also, they are at the mercy of sexual selection and their friends picking on their fashion choices, which sounds pretty harsh. Zooplankton can also adapt to life without predators. Unlike zooplankton focused on defense, these zooplankton develop becoming huge. Scientists named Brooks and Dodson studied zooplankton adaption and showed that with no fish present, larger zooplankton were able to dominate the ecosystem. Huh, learn something new every day. Zooplankton can reproduce in one of two ways. One way is through cyclic parthenogenesis, where the zooplankton undergo asexual reproduction, where the baby zooplankton embryo is made and develops without fertilization. However, going to a Catholic university, I don't think I can condone this because you know. Yeah. In times of stress for the zooplankton, such as if fish are present, abiotic conditions are unfavorable, or Dr. Richardson is handing back exams, many zooplankton will undergo sexual reproduction with their husband or wife. <coughs> Catholic school. However, the zooplankton babies are not always born right away, as they may go into what is called an egg bank in the lake pond soil, where the eggs can remain dormant for some time until the environment is conducive for them once again. Scientists will use these eggs to study what conditions were like when the eggs were laid, which is very useful to know how the environment has changed. These eggs can remain dormant for decades and even longer, which means that there could be zooplankton as old as George Washington, and just like George, these zooplankton will have wooden teeth and cannot tell a lie. So remember, if you really like running away from your problems and celebrating by eating a lot, 
you might be a zooplankton.